18 paintings in two days. Yup, but they're little. Itty bitty, teeny tiny little cute paintings. Hello Minders, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. I've been working on a project for uh, my patrons, my top two tiers of patrons. And I really wanted to do an original, but in the top two tiers you're talking about 18 people. Anyway, patrons aside, I thought you'd like to see how I approached doing uh, little greeting cards. And these are original paintings, they're not going to be prints. And little trading cards. Uh, these are not that difficult to do, they're really fun. If you have some friends out there who appreciate your art and you like to share with them, these can be something that you do without a lot of trouble. Just really fun. So, yeah, I got to send 18 of these buggers out. You're going to help me pack them and ship them? Yeah, well, of course, I'll give you one, too. You want one of these trading cards? Oh, you'd better have a greeting card. Why? You only collect Pokemon cards. Okay. Fine. Well, anyway, let's do some watercolor greeting cards and some watercolor trading cards. Well, I'm going to start with the greeting cards first. And I found this little set of these brown note cards and a matching envelope. And uh, I thought this would work fine. I'm just going to fix the uh, watercolor right to the front. And to do the watercolor, I'm going to use just a tear-off pad of Arches 140-pound cold press. It's a really good paper. Uh, I usually get it pretty cheap, and I practice on this paper a lot, too. And I'm going to cut it to size. I'm going to cut it about an eighth of an inch smaller than the front of the note card. And I'll mount these so that they stand up. You see, you can see here how they'll have a bit of a border. And when I get to mounting them, I'm going to mount them with foam tape so they stand off. And for the trading cards, I'm just going to use these hard, sort of stiff baseball card holders to hold the card in. And I'm going to use a regular standard baseball card as a template just to mark them off. I have these uh, Fabriano Artistico remnants that I want to use up. And they're a little bit bigger than an actual baseball card so I'm going to trim them down so they'll fit nicely in the little card holder and we'll keep them nice and clean and flat. So that ought to work real well and uh, on to the painting now. So on the greeting cards I'm going to mar mark off a quarter inch border and I'm just going to hand draw a border or leave it kind of organic. I'm not going to tape these off. I'm going to let the edges be sort of organic. And right into the painting, and uh, I'll show you some of the background process later, but you can see on these two, I've already laid in the background shapes. And on one of them, I'm kind of painting in a sort of a distant middle ground hill that looks like it's more in sunlight. And once those basic shapes are in, then I just start detailing, picking out uh, contrast and uh, defining edges. And you'll see me do a lot of that, both here and on the trading cards. Here I decided to add a distant sort of hill in a, a violet color. That's cobalt violet. You can see this one's been detailed more. And I'm adding now uh, branches, kind of weaving them in and out of the foliage. And I'm using a rigger. This is a Neptune, a Princeton Neptune rigger. Riggers, of course, are great for branches. Uh, they're also excellent for adding little things on the ground. And here you'll see I'm just kind of dry brushing in some ground detail. Uh, I usually turn a rigger on its side to do that and I dry it out so it's not too wet anymore. And you just kind of get some nice little scumbly dry brush. Back to the other one, um, adding in some contrast at the base of some of these land shapes. This is uh, my silver brush 
uh, blending quill. It's just a bristle brush, so it's kind of stiff. Bristle brushes make nice uh, blending brushes. Um, that one works well for that. And just like with the other one, I'm taking this rigger and weaving branches in and out of the foliage. A little more ground detail with some some sort of linear work but it's fairly dry what I was doing there now here you'll get a little better look at me laying in the basic washes for the background um, just general shapes trying to imitate land masses tree lines kind of merging together uh, ground uh, areas uh, anything that uh, I can detail later into a nice little landscape. This is a mini mister. You may have seen these. You probably have seen these if you're a crafter. I got it out of craft section. It's just a tiny little mister. That kind of helps me control in a smaller area. And what I'm doing is adding mist to the top edges of those trees. You can see now how they've kind of uh, wicked up into that moisture and broken up the harder line and now I'm just dabbing color in while it's still wet giving myself a better base to paint on you can see where I did a lot of the same sort of base painting on the right side but on this one I'm adding a, a sky now just a mixture of Payne's gray and a little bit of cobalt violet and then uh, just Paint it in a cloud shape and then softening the edge with clear water. Just very simple 15 second sky, if that. I didn't do skies on any, but I think a couple of these. Um, just trying to decide, you know, where they were appropriate. Here I'm painting in the watercolor. I wanted this water to sort of look fast moving. So I left a lot of little white areas as I painted around, and I'm not going to get too detailed in the reflections. I dried my brush out, and now I'm lifting, and I'm going to lift a little bit with some tissue. Just to keep uh, all the color and value varied. And again, just as with the others, Starting into some detailing, uh, defining edges, uh, weaving background shapes into foreground shapes, adding detail now to some of the ground masses, giving some shadow at the base of them. And I'm trying to add some dark reflections and uh, movement to the water, give it a little variance and even put in just some slight hints of reflections in places. Keeping it all very simple. Here I'm just dry brushing uh, some rough uh, sh branch shapes. Now back over to this one. And I've alternated between the two as one was drying. And so just continuing with ground detail on this one I uh, decided I wanted a sort of a stand of tree trunks in the back um, sort of a visual focal point of this piece so that's what I'm putting in here it's just very simple I'm keeping all of this loose and simple and uh, you know more tree branches a lot you can do with a rigger and uh, I love them. That's why I'm using them here, sort of again on its side to dry brush in some faint uh, bare branch trees back there. Uh, you can do that with a fan brush also. In fact, I have a video on that technique. But you can also do it with a rigger and turn it sideways. And here's three of the four greeting cards ready to go. And uh, I will just mount them with these foam squares so they stand up a bit, give it a dimensional feel. And mount that right to the front of the card. And then if the recipient wants to, they can take this off 
without a lot of trouble and frame it or they can leave it there those are archival mounting squares so they won't hurt anything but I think that works and we're on to the trading cards so I'm mounting eight at once I'm gonna paint eight at once uh, and I've, I'm taping these together so that I can use the tape to uh, border off the edges. I, I'm not going to use the looser, more organic borders with this because these are not likely to get framed. Um, and another way to do this would probably be to just tape off a single sheet of watercolor paper. But since I had those loose remnants, I just kind of put all the cards down, butted them together, and taped it off. And I'll go through in turn and throw in these simple uh, spontaneous background washes. And I change the color scheme on each of them. And I do them all. I go from one to the next to the next um, so that the others can dry. And here with a dried out or less damp brush, I'm just picking up where I want to model in a little detail, a little uh, contrast. With some highlights you can do that with a dried out or dry slightly damp brush or you can do it with tissue now here you can see all of the base washes and down to the last on the first eight cards and I'm putting in the last one and I'm excited these will all make really neat uh, bases to paint a little bit of detail on this is a great study technique too even if you're not going to give these as gifts uh, it what it does is it forces you to streamline a process and get your process working in repetition and repetition is just a great way to practice I mean it is in whether you're in a sport or music or what and it's the same in art and when you're coming up with a, a workflow process, you know, by the time you get down to the eighth card, and I ended up doing actually 16 of these, uh, you kind of have a process that's starting to really work. But I just enjoy going in and picking out detail, as I usually do in a spontaneous painting. And I, I really try to keep these simple. Um, really, really force myself to stay away from over defining everything you know you want some of that misty dreamy uh wash background to kind of just hint at details and only put in enough to let your eye think you know what may be going on in that scene so they ended up having a really kind of a neat uh surreal almost fantasy feel and i think that's kind of appropriate for a trading card but just enormously fun. I mean, I just had a really fun afternoon painting these. And a, a surprise is just whenever you do something spontaneous, if you want to try your hand at a spontaneous painting, a trading card size painting may be the way to go. Uh, and it just, watercolor just surprises you all the time with what it gives you and, and then what you can go and make out of those shapes and wet sort of shapes and wet sort of background areas so i'm happy with these i'm going to take the tape off and reveal their borders and see what i have and here i'll give you a little closer look at the finished results on these first eight. I'm really pleased with those and all that remains is for me to grab a watercolor pencil of the appropriate color scheme and sign these. So. Once they're all signed, I'll put them in their card holders and they're good to go. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I uh, really had fun doing this. 
So much you can do with little trading cards, little greeting cards. It could be flowers, it could be whatever you want them to be. Be quick and loose and simple. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you patrons for supporting this channel and making this content possible. You really are doing that. And we will see everybody in the next video.